Digimon has had a lot of movies, more than the average fan realizes. There are 19 animation projects that can be classified as films, ranging from full 90 minute feature films to 7 minute shorts, and I have finally seen them all. So being that this is a channel that deep dives into Digimon, it's time for us to rank the Digimon movies. Welcome back to Watch Mojo, I mean the Digino, where we're counting down the Digimon movies from the very worst to very best. Before we dive into the good stuff, let me knock out some of the 3D CG Digimon films that I think are kind of on this list as technicalities. I didn't want to fully exclude them though, so let's talk about them. 19. Digimon Savers 3D, The Digital World in Imminent Danger While classified as a Digimon film, this 7 minute short was part of a theme park experience in Japan. It's a tour of a 3D fantasy world that just so happens to be occupied by Digimon. It's unremarkable in every way. 18. Digimon Adventure 3D Grand Prix The best thing I can say about this is the monsters are sometimes weirdly stylized like Vimon here. It's Digimon Speed Racer slash Digimon Wacky Races, harmless but hardly a film. Now 17, Digital Monster X Evolution. I have never liked this movie and over the years I've learned it's not just me. Of course it has its fans and its defenders. The decision to go 100% CG was ambitious for 2005 and its focus on the digital world is interesting in theory, but 20 years later the film is terrible to look at, it's far longer than it needs to be, it's weirdly depressing and too lore heavy for its own good. Number 16, Digimon Adventure Tri Movie 5, Coexistence. There are six films in the Digimon Adventure Tri series and the penultimate entry is the worst by far. Things started strong, but by movie 4, the adolescent cast of Digimon Adventure Tri was struggling to show us why reuniting them was such a good idea. Movie 5 feels like a quota film. It exists to get us to the finale in movie 6, and to give a nice moment to the members of the cast who didn't get their time to shine in movies 1 through 4. If it weren't for movie 6 being fairly strong and worth seeing, I would not recommend movie 5 to most people. 15. Tri 4. Loss. Tri has developed this reputation of being a big miss, but I will say I was a big fan of Tri's first three films. 4 is where things started to go off the rails however. After the exhilarating and emotional highs of movie 3, the fourth film in the Tri-series struggles to find its footing. The gimmick in this film is that the Digimon have lost their memories and have to create bonds with their humans all over again. It's not a terrible idea, but it's frustrating to watch it play out especially when we know there are bigger fish to fry and problems to solve. 14. Digimon Adventure 02 The Beginning This is one of these The Digidestined Grew Up stories focusing on the cast of Digimon's second season, now in their early 20s. The film is visually quite beautiful to look at, but with a script that is seriously lacking in action and in anything for the cast of 02 to do, viewers ultimately get to listen to a brand new character tell Davis and the others all about his past for 80 minutes. This is a film I was desperate to enjoy, but found to be quite underwhelming. 13. Digimon Frontier Island of Lost Digimon Frontier's first and only film is an inoffensive greatest hits of the fourth Digimon series. The animation is solid, not looking too much different from the Frontier television series, but occasionally it wows with epic evolutions and impressive fight choreography. If you're nostalgic for Frontier but don't want to commit to a full series rewatch, this film might hit the spot. 12. Try 6 Our Future Despite a rocky second half for Try, the final film in the series does its very best to salvage its reputation. The cast of Adventure is fully reunited here and their Digimon have remembered what they're fighting for. There are kaiju-sized battles to witness, sacrifices to be made, and the debut of an incredible Omnimon form, Omegamon Merciful Mode. While not perfect, ultimately leaving some loose plot threads and setting up a direct sequel that never came, Try Movie 6 mostly sticks the landing. Number 11, Try 2, Determination. Try's second film leans hard into slice of life material and anime cliches with a school culture festival, a trip to the onsen, and a couple of existential crises for its teen cast. But given it's the second of six films in a series, it can easily be forgiven for slowing things down and letting us see how the cast lived their high school lives. Plus, it featured an action-packed finale where Mimi and Joe's mega-level Digimon squared off against Imperial Dramon, and for that, it deserves some respect. Number 10, Try 3, Confession. The third film in the Try series broke the brains and the hearts of old-school Digimon fans by announcing that Patamon and several other Digimon had been infected by a computer virus. The scene of TK holding his partner tight as a demonic little Patamon tries to bite him is devastating, and the film's final battle is one of the more memorable sequences in Digimon's 25-year history. It ends ends with a great setup for the next three movies, even if those films kind of fumbled. Number 9, Digimon Tamers Battle of Adventurers. The first Tamers film sends the cast to a gorgeous island setting off the coast of mainline Japan and contains a storyline that integrates virtual pets. It's a fitting premise considering Digimon's history as a toy and Bandai's history with V-Pets and Tamagotchis. The film also features Omnimon slash Omegamon as well as Apocalymon from Digimon Adventure 1999. It's not quite an Adventure x Tamers crossover, but perhaps something more like a baton pass moment. Number 8, Digimon Adventure 02, Hurricane Touchdown, Transcendent Evolution, 
the Golden Digimentals, the first official Zero Two movie and the third part of Digimon the movie, this was the world's introduction to Willis and to Terriermon. It's the Digidestin's first time touching down in the USA, the first time the Japanese cast of Digimon left their home country. The film's version of New York City and the other parts of America featured look gorgeous, the fashion of the characters is on point, and the armor evolution battles are well animated. But whether you're watching the original 65 minute Japanese version or the condensed version in Digimon the movie, the film does drag and can feel meandering at times, preventing it from climbing any higher on this list. Number 7, Digimon Tamer's Runaway Locomon. The second Tamer's film takes place after the events of the main series and is a wonderful epilogue story for the core cast. Rika's emotional relationship to her parents is surprisingly a core pillar of the film, showing that Runaway Locomon isn't just all fast and flashy action. Number 6, Digimon Adventure Tri Movie 1 Reunion. Despite the bad reputation Tri earned over its 3 year rollout, I maintain Movie 1 was a very strong first foot forward. The reunion of the Digimon and the chosen children at the airport, finally providing functionality to Tai's goggles, the return of Omegamon, and the epic Alphamon battle all resulted in a great piece of Digimon media, regardless of how the rest of Tri played out. Number 5, Digimon Savers Ultimate Power Burst Mode Activated. The Digimon Savers or Data Squad movie is a visual delight featuring animation that has no business looking as good as it does. Humanity is locked in a mass hypnosis and the Digimon partners of this season must find a way to wake their partners. Besides the 3D one-offs like X Evolution, this is the first film that goes all in on focusing on the Digimon. This decision pays off big time, allowing the film to feel incredibly unique in the grand catalog of Digimon films. Number 4, Digimon Adventure. This 20 minute film served as a theatrical teaser for the Digimon Adventure anime in Japan, but for most English speaking fans, this was a short prequel seen at the start of Fox Kids Digimon the Movie. Director Mamoru Hosoda envisions Greymon as a Godzilla-like kaiju here, giving fans their first ever look at a digital monster rampaging across a modern city. The 1999 TV anime would never reach the visual highs of this film, and most other Digimon animation projects can't compete with what this film had to offer. Prior to the city destroying kaiju action, we get a short and sweet story of two kids trying to raise a weird pet, hiding it from their mother like you would a stray cat or dog. The film shows off the bravery and purity of our future protagonists and is a perfect Digimon sampler. Number 3, Digimon Adventure Zero Two: Revenge of Diaboromon. We've described Revenge of Diaboromon on this channel as a victory lap for Digimon's second series. Viewers are treated to 30-ish minutes of the Zero Two cast at their very best. The team is not broken up emotionally or physically. Each of them are crushing it and look terrific with both fashion and animation that is trying its best to match Mamoru Hosoda's work on our war game. Ken is happy. Davis is thriving. TK and Kari get to work with their older brothers. While this movie does not reach the highs of the next two films on this list, there is a ton of joy, action, humor, and love for the franchise packed into this short adventure. Number 2, Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna. Despite the issues that lore-sensitive fans may have with this film, Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna is one of the most polished Digimon films from script to animation, with a beautiful finale that will make even the toughest Digimon fans shed a tear. While many of the films on this list are under an hour, or are multiple TV episodes packaged together, Last Evolution Kizuna is a chunky, 94-minute feature film that does its best to honor Digimon Adventure. Yes, it focuses on Taichi and Agumon above anyone else, but short stories about the rest of the cast were produced and made available around the time of the film's release. It's a true tearjerker with great animation and a tight script. Last Evolution Kizuna is the film I tell lapsed Digimon fans to check out when they tell me they used to love Digimon but haven't watched it in 20 years. And number one on this list, Digimon Adventure Our War Game, also known as the middle part of Digimon the movie, is the ultimate Digimon story, the perfect intersection of science fiction and fantasy with otherworldly monsters running around our world wide web. The way that in the year 2000 the film insisted that there are real life consequences to online actions genuinely shaped my worldview for the better. It features stunning animation spearheaded by director Mamoru Hosoda who dreamed up a version of the internet here so good he had to return to it in his future films Summer Wars and Bell. And while its digital spaces are stunning, our war game is also an animated love letter to the real world. Its various shots of Tokyo, of the Japanese countryside, of the rest of the world are lifelike and painterly. Easily some of the best looking Digimon material in existence. This story does justice to most of the eight core Digidestin while providing fair and plot relevant justification for why characters like Mimi, Kari, and Joe had to sit this one out. And of course, you can't talk our war game without mentioning the debut of Omegamon slash Omnimon, a moment in anime history that lives rent 
rent free in the minds of fans everywhere. And that is our list of Digimon films ranked from worst to best. Here's an alternate look at the list that removes the 3D movies and the six tri films since those could also be classified as one TV anime. This is a cleaner top 10 in case you wanted to see that. Of course, let us know what you thought of the list and what your favorites are. Remember, every list is just an opinion, so try to keep a level head if you disagree with this list or any other takes in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this, it's completely free and just takes one click or tap of a button. Thanks so much and see you in the next video.